Week. G'day guys, how are we going? Back again for another Sunday night live chat with you guys. Um, and this week's um, topic is going to be after the video I did last week, uh, last Monday night. G'day Dazza, thanks. Um, everything's come through all right, loud and clear, and everyone can hear um, what's going on out there, which would be good. Um, so yeah, so this topic's going to be about I did last week where I um, talked about uh, how I pack my camping food uh, when I go away um, in my, you know, in the, in the containers. So how I pack the food in my fridge and my camp box and that sort of stuff. One of the other things that I, I talked about in, in that video was um, the menu planner, the camping food menu planner that I've put together. And now that I'm using that throughout a lot of my camp trips now going forward, and reading a lot of the comments that came through from that video last week that quite a few people are using something similar in the way of, you know, containers, you know, for packing their food in their in their fridges. But a lot of feedback came through about the food menu planner and, and uh, you know, and, and hadn't sort of thought about that idea. And quite a few people have sort of asked, you know, if they could see a bit more detail about what goes on with my food menu planner and what's actually on it. So, that's what we're going to go through tonight, and then after we sort of go through that, then we'll go through a bit more detail about some benefits, about why um, why the, the food menu planners are a good thing for your, for your camping food uh, when you go on your camping trips, but good to see a few of you guys on there tonight. Uh, Lachlan, thanks very much, and Jared, g'day guys, how are you? Andrew, thanks very much, Paul, loud and clear. That's really good to hear. Chris, snow in the high country, there's certainly plenty of it, mate, there's heaps of it coming down. So, yeah, so we'll get into it. So here's um here's a well, just one page now. This is one of one of my pages here from um it's gonna be pretty hard to see it with uh being so bright, but I'll, I'll go through some of the stuff that I, I've got on here and you know, and food that I've that I list on uh, on my menu plan now. It's a bit like I, I go into the detail, it's a bit like you know, when you go out to a restaurant and you're reading the menu off the same thing. It, it's that sort of detail. So I'll just go through a couple here. So here's just one of the dinners that I've got here. Um, the steak, then now this is actually going to be on my video tomorrow night. So it's got steak, potato chips, and fried pan, asparagus beers, corn cob, and grilled with steak. So, you know, going those sort of details, and then I'll have a then I've got a breakfast one here of scrambled eggs, Turkish bread, grated cheese, and some parsley. So I'll list everything out so you know exactly what's going to go into it. And then, you know, when you do your shopping, you know, down the track, you know, you know what you got to get out. Um, another one here, another dinner I've got here, marinade chicken wings. This is on one of my other videos that I did a little while ago. So I've got rice and avocado bread in the breadcrumbs, the avocado chips that I did. Um, beaten egg, flour, frying pan, uh, the asparagus beers in the frying pan. So I list, list all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's just really, really handy, um, you know, when you're preparing your meals. And, look, here's another dinner here, some, just a simple one. This is on my new, on a New South Wales trip that I recently did. Um, snags in wraps with tomato, lettuce, English mustard, cheese and sauce. So it's all laid out. So, you know, I know what sort of food that I'm uh, going to have for, for dinner that night and what sort of what I've got to go and get when I go and do my food shopping. And they're just, you know, just some ideas there. Got some lunch stuff there with, you know, some Turkish bread rolls and chicken, Kiev, tomato, mayo and lettuce. Again, it's all laid out. No guesswork on, uh, you know, on what I'm going to put in it. Um, and I've got pages and pages of these. I've got heaps of them. Um, and they're certainly well worth keeping out. Do any of you guys um, get into these sort of things and actually go into that sort of detail, you know, with, with the food menus and when you're, when you're going on for your trips, you know, do you do a food menu planner? And I'm finding it really, really helpful. And it'll go through some of the benefits, certainly, with that before we have a chat with some of you guys on heaps of questions coming through here. Uh, Mark, there, it's very sunny in, in Benalla, well, in Ballina. Well, it's certainly not sunny down here at the moment, mate. It's uh, freezing cold. G'day, Jeffrey. How are you going there, mate? Uh, Paul. Coming in from Botswana. Thanks very much there, Paul, from coming in from Botswana, mate. Greatly appreciate that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so just going through, I've got sort of four or five benefits here and, and, and uh, as to why I like to do the food menu planners and how they're very helpful. Well, for starters, you're going to put a menu together, that a food that you like. So whatever's going to be on that menu, you know you're going to like it because so, it's food that you generally eat all the time when you're whether you're at home or, you know, when you're going out on your camping trip. So that's certainly one of the benefits. Uh, as I've mentioned before, you know, it helps certainly with your food shopping because you can take, um, you know, you can take your menu with you when you're going to the supermarket and, you know, you know what what items you've got to get either from the supermarket or from home. Um, and the other good thing with it too is 
you know, you're only going to be buying food that you need, you know, because it's all laid out in your menu planner, um, the food you're going to take. So you're not going to be wasting, you know, time and buying food that you might end up in your fridge or in your food box that you may not even eat for the whole trip you're going to be away. So it's sort of, um, it helps with that too, that you're only going to take away food that you're going to need. So Therefore, you're going to help with that's going to help you with saving space in uh, in not only your fridge but also your camp box too. Uh, so you're not going to fill up either of those two items with unnecessary food that you're not necessarily going to eat. So there's certainly a good one. And the other good one thing with it too is, um, as I mentioned in that video last week, is keep a record of all this sort of stuff. Like I've got now a file on uh, on my computer here, and, and I keep all these menus. So it's so much easier for trips going forward. Um, you know, rather than, you know, your trip coming up next week and you think, oh, you know, what are you going to have? Well, just go through your file. And, and again, they're all, all meals that you've had before and know the meals you're going to be like. So just pick out those because they're all laid out, all detailed with everything that's going to go into whatever that breakfast menu is or break or lunch me meal or your dinner meal, all laid out there. So it's very, very easy. And, you yeah, know, you can either use the same meals that you had in the last trip or mix and match and change them around from other trips you've done in the past. So, the food menu planner, it's pretty damn simple, but, geez, it um, it takes away a lot, a lot of the guesswork and just it makes it uh, helps making your camera trips so much easier and a lot more simple. So there's certainly some big benefits there. And so if those people are certainly asking about the food menu planners, that's a um, bit more detail and closer detail on how to put them together and certainly the benefits with them going forward. Who else have we got going on here? Richie, it's going there. A bit blurry tonight, mate. What's going on? Um, got to be the got to be the weather. It could be um, it could be something to do with uh, the internet. Because I tell you what, I've got a video that's loading up right behind me here at the moment for tomorrow night's video, and uh, it's taking twice as long, two three times as long as it should should be. So, could be something to do with uh, maybe the, the weather because it's pretty ordinary down here in mighty Victoria at the moment. Very uh, cold and wet, and heaps of snow falling down. Um. Snowing tonight up at uh, Mount Matlock at higher, yeah. There's um, there's plenty of the snow falling around, and I'm hopefully going to get into that a bit later on in the week for make another video in that. But we'll see how it all goes. Uh, is the stream blurry for anyone else? No, it's not blurry at my end. So, um, of course, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm not seeing what you guys are seeing, but it could be income. It could be something to do with um, with the weather because uh, yeah, it's it's been um, very very uh, very and slow, slow loading up with um, the videos I've got going on here at the moment. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully, we can persevere with it all. Uh, how much beer do you take? To, you know, do you have on, on your on that list? Well, there's no no beers or anything like that on that list. I I know pretty much um you know what I'm going to take, but don't mind the old gin and tonics. A few of those going down the last few trips, and um so yes, yeah, so I sort of um you sort of know what I'm going to take as far as drinks and that sort of stuff go. But it's mainly for the food is uh, where the the menu planners are really really helpful for helping you out with that sort of stuff. Uh, go, Jeffrey. How you going there, mate? Oh, I have a 16 year old boy. Never, never, never came home for food. Yeah, <laughs> well, I was a bit like that myself back in those younger days. Very rarely, really came home. But you come home eventually because you got to eat somewhere, mate. So it certainly helps. That's for sure. Uh, Paul, it could get, it could get a, a bit hard to to follow uh, the menu after lots of scotches. Well, that's why you've got to have got to get your food out early, mate, before you get into too many of those <laughs> later on in the night. So hopefully you've done. Um, Done most of your cooking before you get on the scotches, mate, and then uh, then your your menu menu won't be too blurry when you got to go and read it, and especially during the morning and during the day, be all good, I reckon. So you'd be right, uh, Miss Buckaroonie. How you going there, Snow? What's that? I oh, know, yeah, mate. You probably wouldn't. Um, you probably only see that that white stuff only on Google or on the internet, mate. So yeah, mate, we got uh, it's coming down in sheets down here at the moment, and uh, yeah, I plan to um, get in get in amongst it uh, later this week. So. There's plenty of it around, down to about sort of seven, eight hundred the last couple of days. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very early cold snap down here in the Mighty Vic, uh, only in what mid-April, early mid-April, and they're talking those sort of numbers over two or three days, pretty consecutive days. It's pretty unheard of, but um, it's all going on. So it, it's good stuff for us down here to get amongst it. So be later in the week, going to get on it. Uh, Biggles, g'day, mate. How are you going? If you're uploading at the same time, that will affect the quality of the stream. <coughs> Right, eh? <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Right, um, yeah, well, but I have done that in the past. So I've had videos going at the same time, but it could very well do it because this video that out the back of you right now would normally be done in sort of a couple of hours, but it's been going since about 11 o'clock today and it is still going. <coughs> so 
hopefully um, we can persevere with it. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and we'll keep, keep going for next week. But we'll keep going anyway. Uh, Scott, how you going there, mate? Uh, I might see you in Trafalgar Friday. Uh, you going in Traff, mate? Uh, we are picking up the picking up our meat for for our next trip the next week in. Right, I might see you around um, maybe later in the week, mate. You just never know, mighty mighty Trafalgar. We'll see how we go with that, mate. Not sure I'm going to be Friday, um, but we'll see see what happens there. Uh, g'day, Craig. Can't wait to get back up there. Love the place here. Yeah, look, mate, um, it's a pretty, pretty cool place, and uh, hopefully you can get back up there shortly. Mr. Buckaroonie, how are you going up there in, mate, in Queensland? I was <laughs> sweating your ass off today with the, with this big country, with this big country and this one. Yeah, well, mate, it's been uh, – well, like you've had some pretty ordinary ordinary rain, I think, over there last week or so. Gee, it was pretty belting down up there last week or so. But uh, hopefully that's all gone by the sound of it and uh, pretty probably be pretty hot and humid up in uh, North Queensland at the moment. Braden, how are you going there, mate? A uh, bit crook. I have <clears> – <throat> I have had a bit of the lurgy, mate, and no, it's not a COVID. I don't need a COVID test, but I've had a bit of the lurgy. It's a bit that time of year because I had a big weekend actually in Dargo a week ago, which probably didn't help uh, during Easter, but it was a good good couple of days anyway. Uh, Mark, road trip uh, to Vic next week. Uh, send me send me the heat, heat wave for, for Christ's sake. Yeah, well, hopefully it uh, depends when you're coming down uh, next week, but um, I think it's going to clear up in the middle of the week and then there's another front supposed to be coming through towards the end of next week. So see how you go with it, mate. But uh, any, at the end of the day, look, take the high country as it is and how it comes, and I'm sure you'll have a great time anyway. Uh, Mount Donnelly Wang is uh, some, some, uh, someone ducked up there. Look, a fair bit of snow has been falling up through there. I saw some photos on social today about Mount Donnelly Wang. Uh, two wheel drives getting stuck up there. Well, yeah, not ideal because it's such an easy road to get up to Mount Donnelly Wang. Uh, but yeah, so that's why they all get stuck up there, which is not great because there's a heap of snow falling up there too. Uh, Biggles, it's also school holidays in the Vic. Uh, so maybe lo lots of online tonight. Yeah, fair, fair chance they could because they wouldn't be getting out and about. But yeah, there's another week of. School holidays going on down here, so maybe maybe they're all chewing up the data, mate, and uh, all up the, the internet waves, and it's a bit bit light on. But we'll press on. Um, would be good to see a video up uh, up the back of Matlock. Be sure to drop in to Marysville, and uh, I haven't been up through Matlock for for quite some time. Matlock and Woods Point and down through there, I uh, haven't been in that area for quite a while. So, yeah, who knows? We might get over that way. Um, see, see what happens on. Uh, lock of your seasonal closures, yeah, look, they don't start for a little while yet. Um, that first Thursday straight after Queen's birthday weekend in June is when um, when they'll officially kick in. So we've still got a little while yet to go before they, they kick in, mate. Uh, Jake, g'day, mate. How you going? Good topic. Thanks very much. Personal uh, personal solution is a, missus, <laughs> no, is, is a chef. Well, that's really handy if you've got a chef in the family, mate. That uh, certainly helps, that's for sure. Uh, but seriously, great great idea because good trip preparations. Yeah, look, it certainly does help with your trip preparation. No doubt about that. And in the day, you just want your trips to be, you know, run as smoothly and easy as possibly can. So, any way, uh, any way of making it run smoothly and a lot more easier is the way to go. I reckon, and certainly the trip planners are for your for your met food menus. Good way to go, I reckon. So yeah, I'll, I'll certainly like them, and I'll keep doing it going forward, whether it be a weekend or even longer. They're just uh, very very handy. That's for sure. G'day, Scott. Here you go there, mate, from from Lacola, from Lola. What's that? Love driving, foot driving down, and I'm from I'm, and I'm twelve. You're twelve, mate. Thanks very much, there, Scotty, for coming in tonight. Um, then you're own twelve, mate. Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate you dropping in for a chat. Uh, Braden should do should be plenty of snow around Mount Useful. Look anywhere up through there, mate. Mount Useful, uh, Matlock, and um, set and Matt's hair and that sort of stuff. They're all um, all got plenty at the back of Wahala and that sort of stuff. So yeah, there, there's no shortage of been snow sitting around at the moment. Um, yeah, you know, the last few days or so it's been down around sort of seven, eight hundred. Seen plenty of uh, photos of Craig's hut and over that side, Mansfield side. There's plenty down around there, around Razorback hut and that sort of thing. So, and there, especially Razorback, that's pretty low there. So, plenty of snow down there too, which is pretty good. Uh, Michael, how you going there, mate? Um, get up to much fishing and your, and your snowies. No, I didn't do, didn't take, well, I did take the fishing rod on that last snowy trip, but the thing is, I went into New South Wales and I didn't have a New South Wales fishing license. So, the rod stayed in the back of the car, unfortunately, but um, I plan to do a bit more when uh, some of the other trips coming forward. But, um, yeah, so that's why I didn't do a great deal of fishing on that last trip because I was in New South Wales without a New South Wales fishing licence, but I do have a Vic fishing licence, that's for sure. Uh, who else we got there? Dazza, here you go, mate. Rivers uh, will be high after all this rain, absolutely. They'll be high for quite some time, particularly um, once this snow begins to drop off and begins to melt. 
Uh, they'll be cranking for a little while yet. So, yeah, do need to be very careful if you're going to be taking on any river crossings and um, for, for quite some time they'll be they'll be cranking for a little while yet. G'day, Paul. How you going there, mate? Can I ask how much you, you average spend on food for a two-day trip, including alcohol, et cetera? Um, it's – oh, geez, I, I don't really know how much to put a cost on that. Probably 100 bucks maybe for, for – Food and food and drinks, because um, it's only myself. So you know, I don't have a great deal to sort of think about other than just myself. So sort of don't spend a great deal, but yeah, probably around that hundred dollar mark probably gets me through a weekend with with foods and drinks and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, pretty much tops it off. But I sort of haven't really thought too much about the uh, cost side of it. But that'd be probably ballpark, I reckon. Uh, okay, Daniel, coming in from Tassie, mate. Thanks very much, there, great mate. Thanks for coming in from Tassie. I've seen a couple of pics around Tassie too. Um, uh, Lake Sinclair put some photos up around there. A fair bit of snow has been falling in that area too. So there's snow dropping around all around the country at the moment, which is a good thing, especially at this early stage in the season when we're not even into May yet because this is generally the sort of conditions we get for May, uh, get this early snowfall. But we're still a few weeks away from May yet. So hopefully we might be in for a cracking snow season and uh, there could be some could be good signs for uh, – what's coming up but we'll talk about some um good snow snow place to go a bit later on probably another few more weeks we'll start having a bit of a chat about you know places to go in the high country when um with the snow season on and um and gate closures and that sort of stuff so yeah we'll chat about that a bit later as we go forward so yeah so that's um probably um nearly, nearly wraps that one up you know just chatting about um the food menus because i did get asked a lot of a lot of people did ask about those the menu plans that i've got put together there um, about how much detail I do put into them. And uh, as, as you can see, you know, there is a fair bit of detail in them. It's not just, you know, a chop for dinner and, you know, and a bit of bacon for, for breakfast. It's all detailed and all laid out on everything that I'm going to have with that particular meal. So I find it works really well and, um, yeah, very, very helpful for all my trips going forward. So so there we go, guys. We might uh, wrap this one up since we're finished with that one. And uh, good to see a few of you guys uh, on here. Hopefully you've all had a good Easter there last week and uh, had managed to get away with magnificent weather that we did have. Um, but, yeah, she's certainly taken a turn for the worst now, that's for sure, going forward. So we'll see how it all goes with one more week of the school holidays, and uh, we'll probably catch up with you guys maybe next week, I reckon. We'll see how we go. But in the meantime, guys, you have a great week. Thanks so much again for everyone that's coming here tonight. Greatly appreciate all the feedback, and uh, hopefully those uh, that little few tips there on putting your food plan is ready for menus together for any of your trips going forward. Going to help you out. Good on you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you a bit later on. Uru.